So welcome back to the channel where we buy expensive equipment just so that we can have small, slight and very marginal improvements to our astrophotography. It is a hobby unfit for the sane and rational. My name is Ali Labaidli and welcome to Astra Pharma. Today we're diving into an amazing piece of equipment that is flat out amazing and yes, pun absolutely intended. We're going to talk about the Wonder Astro Motorized Flat Panel EC version 4 aka the Glowing Frisbee. So I've actually placed an order for two versions of this flat panel two different sizes, a 100mm version for my 135mm lens and a 190mm version for my 140mm Apo right behind me. That sentence was so hard to say. <laughs> I'm not a native English speaker, so you'll have to bear with me. The unboxing experience for both sizes is quite similar. You have the flat panel itself, as you can see here. You'll also have a USB cable and a 12 volt power cable. And you'll have these white zip ties that you'll use to mount your flat panel on top of your telescope. So what is the Wonder Astro flat panel? In short, it's a flat field generator for astrophotography. It helps you take flat frames, those mystical images that help you calibrate out all the vignetting, all the dust bunnies, and that weird funky optics picked up the last time you sneezed near your telescope. Bless you, by the way. <laughs> it can also open and close automatically or as commanded. And if you have the same version as I do, the AC version, it can actually remember its position even if you move it manually. And it's quite accurate at that actually. It also has adjustable brightness levels from a scale of 1 to 255. And perhaps most importantly, it just looks good on top of your telescope, doesn't it? Actually, the most important aspect of this motorized flat panel is the fact that you can use it in unison with Nina's advanced sequencer so that you can go to bed and not have to worry about taking your flats in the middle of the night. <laughs> God knows you need some sleep. We're all starting to look like a tribe of impoverished vampires over here. So yes, it can be ASCOM controlled, as well as with the ASI Air. Apparently there's a specific mechanism that you can use to make it work with the ASI Air. I'm not sure how it works, but I've read on the manual that it does, as well as with the Stella Vita from Toptech. And I'm pretty sure it was gonna work with the Stellar Mate. Everything works with the Stellar Mate. <laughs> Look, I was gonna make a video on how to install this flat panel on top of your telescope, but if you can rig up a deep sky object telescope, but struggle with a zip tie, then you should please remove yourself from my premises and place yourself within the confines of a stamp collector's group meeting. So let's talk a little about the build quality of this thing, which is what I dislike about it the most actually. It just feels a little sickly sometimes, it makes weird noises when it's opening and closing, but it does work. You can set custom open and close positions and like I said, it can remember its position pretty well. It also has obstacle detection, so you can actually set the open and close position automatically. It's not recommended, but you can do that if you want. For example, if your telescope is in a remote observatory, the light source, which is the main point of this whole thing, is actually truly flat with no banding in my experience. And it's also worth mentioning that it has heating for those of you who live in colder conditions. I probably will never use it here in Kuwait, but it's worth mentioning. And before I give you my final verdict on the product, let me go to the roof and show you how this would work in a real life scenario. Okay, everybody, so here we are on the rooftop. I have my telescope ready. It's polar aligned and ready to start testing and I have my flat panel connected and my flat wizard trained exposure times populated. The way that you populate these is usually just by going to the flat wizard and taking some actual flats for each filter. It's gonna record the given exposure time and the given brightness level for each filter and then it's gonna populate the flat panel mode. So as you can see here, the flat wizard trained exposure times are all recorded for all of my filters and the way that you actually make use of that is through the advanced sequencer. As you can see here, for my basic sequence end so this is the sequence that is going to be triggered at the end of my imaging session i have find home so the telescope is going to home itself set tracking to stopped it's going to stop the tracking it's going to close the flat panel because i'll usually have it open and then it's going to start taking my trained flat exposures i have it for l r g b here and then for the last one i have it keep closed off so it's going to reopen just because i like to actually cover the telescope with the original dust cap even though i have the flat panel it doesn't really cover the entire telescope and then i have set brightness to zero that basically means that it's going to turn off the light on the flat panel and then i have warm camera and that would be the end of my imaging session so i have a mock imaging session here set up on the advanced sequencer if you want a tutorial in the future on nina's advanced sequencer let me know in the comments below we're just going to take two 10 second exposures on luminance and then we're going to go ahead and start the basic end sequence that i have set up here just because we want to see if the flat panel would work in a real world scenario so let's go ahead and actually start my mock imaging session as you can see the telescope is going to actually slew to the target which is m81 it's going to center it and then we're gonna i think run an autofocus session so i'll see you guys when the focus starts so as you can see here now that the target is centered we're gonna i think run an autofocus routine there we are i'll see you guys just before that routine is finished 
So I think we're almost done here with the autofocus routine. That should be the last exposure. Yep, and now we're starting guiding. I've already pre-calibrated the guiding to speed this up. And as soon as the guiding starts, we should start actually capturing our exposures. It's actually calibrating again because I have force calibration on. So let's wait for that to finish and we'll get back into the imaging session. And the guiding should almost be completed, the calibration. Yep, and now we're guiding and PHD2 is settling. We're gonna start taking our exposure soon and we're actually now capturing our two frames. Let's pretend that these are 80 frames and we're imaging throughout the night and we only have two frames left and now we're taking our final frame and then we're gonna start initiating our basic sequence end which should include our flat panel closing and our flats taken. As you can see here, the mount is heading home. I really hope this works. I'm doing this actually live with you guys. This is the first time I ever tried it. So the mount has reached its own position. And yep, it looks like the flat panel is closing now. And we're gonna start taking our flat frames when it closes. I think that should do it. Yep. So now we're gonna take our luminous flats and that's done. I've only have it set to take two flats. And now we're gonna take our red flats I can see that the brightness level is actually changing, which is a good sign. And now we're going to take our green flats. And finally, we're going to take our blue flats. Hopefully the flat panel should open up again, as you can see here. It did struggle a little bit, but it's coming up, it's coming up. And I think that's us. Hopefully by now we're already sleeping and we're going to wake up in a few hours with our entire imaging sequence completed with all the flats that we need captured already. So let's go back downstairs and we'll finish off our discussion. So should you get one of these for your telescope? I think we can all agree that this belongs to a category called nice to have, but not essential. It's probably mostly useful for remote imagers. I'll definitely enjoy not having to wake up and do flats ever again in my life. So the decision is actually yours. I like having trained exposure times and the way this integrates with Nina's advanced sequencer. But if you decide to go with one of these, just make sure that you don't update it with the wrong firmware. It's a mistake that I made in the beginning and it caused me a lot of headache. Anyways, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. This has been Astra Pharma and thank you for watching.